This video is going to be completely different to anything I've uploaded before. It's a little project that I've decided to undertake, which is going to be a storage box for a ferret, ferret finder, uh, one of the Mark III's, and a couple of collars, plus enough space for the batteries and things like that. So I've got a 3D printer at home, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an online uh, program called Tinkercad to design a slip top box to hold my locator and the collars. So what I did was I started out with a box, the rough size of where I want it. Now my measurements were only rough at this point, so I was fully aware I was going to have to print a prototype and then adjust the measurements as necessary. So what I'm doing here is I've made a box the size that I want. I've then made a second box, which is the greyish coloured one inside it. Now what that is, is that's actually a hole rather than a solid box. Um, so I've made that so that it's two mil smaller in width and length and it's going to be sitting two mil higher than the base of the red box so when we group those two together what that what will happen is that hole will eat into the red box and it will give us a tray just like that now what i want to do is i want to put a divider around about a third of the way in top to bottom to give me space down, as we're looking at it there, space down the right hand side for probably three pouches um, or little boxes for putting collars and batteries and bits and pieces in and then the left hand side will be for the locator itself. So all I'm doing here, I'm just measuring up and positioning that wall in the correct place. And then just to make life easier for myself, what I did was I made this little yellow box as a spacer. Um, so all I did with that was I just lined that up. Now that was done to the width of the locator, just so I knew where to place that wall. And then deleted it when it was no longer needed. Uh, likewise, this is another little wall going in. I flipped the colour on the original box now to green, just because it makes things easier looking at. Um, I've used another little yellow box there just to give me a, a dimension for making sure my pockets are evenly spaced. But the real, only reason that's green, as I say, was just to make it easier because you were dealing with red walls in a red box and it was, I was kind of losing the lines a little bit. So by changing the colour, it just becomes a little bit more obvious. And then what I want to do is I want to introduce a shaped piece down towards the front of the box where the Mark III's taper in towards what I'm going to call the nose of the locator. So as they taper in, I've taken a rough measurement on there. Um, and then duplicated that wedge get them in position so that gives me the rough space there and the rough shape of the locator so I've saved that and exported it next I'm going to import that into this piece of software called Cura which is a slicing software now what a slicer does for people who have absolutely no idea how 3d printing works if you think about the model in horizontal lines now what the printer is going to do is that's going to print it from bottom to top in layers now because i'm only doing this one as a prototype i'm doing it at a 0.3 millimeter layer thickness which means the printer is going to put down 0.3 millimeters of plastic where it needs plastic to be so the further up the box it gets once it's finished doing the base it'll do the two wedges and it'll be doing the walls and the dividers for the boxes on the side and obviously the perimeter as well and then as it gets further and further up it'll put a roof on the wedges and then it'll carry on just doing the boxes and the perimeter and it'll work its way up to its full height there so we're slicing that now and that's just working out and essentially just printing a list of instructions off for the printer to follow so it's just taking its time a little bit with having a couple of things open on the laptop at the time so it's given an estimate of 11 hours and 32 minutes now I'm going to be stopping this around about a third of the way in because it is just a prototype and I just wanted it as a to give me a physical mock-up against the locator itself so I knew how much I needed to tweak the measurements to get a, a fit that I was happy with so what we do with that is that gets saved to a memory card and then the memory card gets taken to the printer and so memory card goes in the printer has been preheating at this point as well, 
the uh, the base plate is uh, glass with like a in, on this particular printer it's got like a sort of a not quite a non-stick um, surface but it's kind of a it, it's non-stick when it's cold but it sticks the plastic to it when it's preheated uh, in this case for this plastic it's at 60 degrees the plastic itself is being pushed through the nozzle at around about 205 degrees so what happens is there's motors on the bed that are moving that forward and backwards there's motors on either side of the gantry which is raising the print head up and down and then there's motors um, running a belt which is in between the two stainless rods which is pulling the head left and right so all it does is it uses that to plot and put the plastic down like I say for this it's putting it down in 0.3 millimeter layers the outside square is just what they call a skirt so that's just a kind of a, essentially just a test to make sure the the heads printing properly before you get into the main part of your model so it prints the outside first and does that as a continuous run it does about th in this I think it was set to three passes so it's done three layers wide and then it'll go corner to corner to fill in the gap because that's the first or the, the lowest 0.3 millimeter slice I've got the with the walls being set to three layers what it'll do is it'll print three layers in that way and it'll actually overlap them so where it's going bottom left to top right in this layer the next layer will go bottom right to top left so with having the print lines running in opposite directions it's going to work a little bit like plywood essentially in that it's going to give you a laminate with the grain running in different directions so it will give you a stronger end product you'll see me do a little stress test on this anyway um, once it's come off the printer the other thing the printer does as well is so that it's not printing you can set it up to print solid but what you normally do if you've got big sections that are solid you'll actually print them with an infill um, so you choose what percentage you want it in filling and then you can choose an infill pattern as well I typically just use a honeycomb pattern and I think this was set to about 20 or 25 percent infill so you could turn it up to 100 and it'd be completely solid but those it's going to be mainly those little triangular corner pieces heading down towards the nose of the locator itself and they're not under massive amounts of stress so they can actually be quite light I could probably back them off to 10% in all honesty and there wouldn't be any detrimental effect anyway and it would only cost about 5 or 6 grams of plastic um, you know in the in the total weight of the box so it wouldn't be a significant saving to be worth messing about with really so you can see there the first layers as the layers go down it puts the perimeter down and then it works corner to corner again and then I've just gone to a bit of a time lapse. You can see there the honeycomb pattern for the infill, and then it puts a roof on it. So, this one, like I say, we stopped around about a third of the way in just so that I could mock it up against the locator and see how the measurements sat. So, it's a little bit too short and it's a little bit too narrow but the slopes are pretty much bob on for where I want them to sit at the side of the locator. And then, as I say, just a little bit of a stress test there on it in a second. That was just to see how it, how it behaved. Now, if you take into account, it's going to be about three times higher than this when it's finished, so the, the more vertical ball that's on there, that'll actually help reinforce it further as well. And I'm, I'm really giving that a push and it's it's flexing a little bit but not enough to even get close to breaking or damaging it so what I've done is I've gone back into the slicing software uh, back into the design software sorry and I'm just altering the dimensions slightly making it a wee bit wider in that left hand side where the locator is going to sit and then I'll make it a little bit longer as well once I've checked everything's lined up so once that's done I'm happy with that that then goes back across into the slicing software and again that gets sliced because the dimensions have changed it needs to give the printer a 
new set of instructions to follow. So that, for whatever reason, has come out at 7 hours 53 minutes. I can't remember if I changed any settings to get it to print quicker or not. I can't remember. So back onto a bit of a time lapse again, and then we're going to let this one run right the way through because I'm happy with the measurements on there. So you can see the triangles there are being left with the infill material because they don't need a lid on them yet because they're going to be built up another they're about another two centimeters high so you can see as the wall gets higher and as you need less material on each layer obviously the layer takes a lot less time so it probably took a third of the print time just to put the base down compared to the rest of it so just that first two millimeters was around about a third of the whole print time uh, start to finish this actually took just over six and a half hours because I did speed up the print on the machine itself You can tweak the settings while it's running. So that's it. That's the prototype I'm happy with the spacings and everything. What I will do is I'll probably put a ramp going from the nose of the receiver um, And where the triangles are and just run it back around about a third of the way Just to give it a little bit of support underneath where it's uh, it's a little bit scalloped underneath so what I've done then is I've gone back into my design software and I'm making a lid. Now as I said at the start what I want to make is a slip top box. So what I need to do is essentially the same as I did to begin with where I take a box the size I want for the, the outside dimensions and then I make a second box and then make sure it's aligned. That is going to be where I want for the hole. So as soon as I group those together that becomes a tray and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this little semicircular tube into the middle of the box I'm just going to flip it upside down get it to a shape that I'm happy with and then what I'll do is I'll just align those so that it's central and then make that a hole and cut that out so what that's going to mean is you can get your thumb and forefinger on the base of the box you can get the rest of your other hand on the top of the box and with being a slip top it should go up and down just like that now i've made this with a millimeter and a half clearance top to bottom and left to right so it's three quarters of a mil each side which I'm hoping is enough if not I'll have to do it again so what I'll do is I'll print about a third of this again and once a third of it's printed I'll whip it off the printer I'll check that it's the right size if it needs adjusting I'll adjust it if it is the right size and it's a perfect fit then I'll as soon as it's off the printer it's it's goosed I can't put it back on but if it is the right size then I'll print a fresh one and that'll be my prototype box ready to go for the main one what I'll do like I say I've got a couple of little tweaks I want to do to the uh, the main part of the box so once I've got the size dialed in for the lid I'll print those a little bit a little bit smaller so it'll be 0.2 millimeters rather than 0.3 millimeter layers and they'll be ready for using so thanks a lot I hope you enjoyed it and I will post another little video when I've got the finished article done with a proper a proper look at it thank you very much